It is a great privilege for me to be invited to speak to the 6th Understanding China Conference. The theme of this session might be described as the two incomprehensibles. The two things that the West cannot comprehend about China, which are, of course, Chinese civilization and the Chinese Communist Party. It is impossible to make sense of modern China without an understanding of the foundational importance of Chinese civilization. The modern world as we know it, in contrast, was founded on the basis of the nation state, starting with the two treaties of Westphalia in 1648. It was an exclusively European event, prefiguring the European inspired international system that we know today. Every country is recognised and required to be a nation state. In the great wave of decolonization between 1945 and 1965, the only option for newly independent countries was to become a nation state, even if that form was alien to many of these societies. China, for its part, had already been obliged by its weakness at the end of the 19th century to submit to at least some of the norms of the nation state in order to gain international, that is Western, acceptance. But China is only partially a nation state. It is primarily a civilization state. Its history did not start in 1648, but perhaps 221 BC when it became unified, or even longer before that. It is impossible to understand China as a conventional nation state because it is not one. For more than two millennia, China existed as a civilization. Its identity as a nation state dates back little more than a century. The defining characteristics of China, Confucian values, a distinctive relationship between state and society, Guanxi, many of its social norms and much else are a product of Chinese civilization. So are its governing traditions. Francis Fukuyama has pointed out that Chinese governance has displayed a remarkable and far greater continuity for two millennia than the governance of any other country. The West is overwhelmingly ignorant of the pivotal importance of Chinese civilization to modern China. It seeks to interpret China through a Western prism. It believes that China should be like the West. Its refusal to understand China in its own terms has become more extreme in the period since Trump. China is reduced to the period since 1949 and somehow equated with the Soviet Union. China's rise and growing importance in the world, however, is irresistibly changing the nature of the global debate and the complexion of the world. China is simply too central to the present and the future to be so dismissed. With China's rise, its civilizational roots become fundamental not only to an understanding of China, but to the post-Western world that is now taking shape. In this latter context, Chinese civilization is giving voice and legitimacy to the plethora of other civilizational traditions, from India and Iran to Turkey and Ethiopia, that for the last two centuries have been ignored, dismissed or simply erased. Which brings me to the Chinese Communist Party. Western political parties lie within the tradition of the Western nation state. In contrast, the Chinese Communist Party is the product of a civilization state. The greatest problem confronting China has always been how to bind and unify a huge and disp disparate country. China could be regarded as an anachronism, a great empire that has more metamorphosized into its present-day incarnation. 
it is part of China's cultural genius that when more or less all of the empires disappeared, China managed to survive and under the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party is thriving like never before. But the immense centrifugal forces that come with such size and diversity can never be ignored or underestimated. It requires a special kind of leadership, one that seeks to unify rather than divide, that has deep roots amongst the people, that prioritises the unity of the country above all else. Imagine, please forgive me for this uncomfortable flight of fantasy, transplanting the American political system into China. A political system that is adversarial, increasingly divided, and now deeply polarised. Hitherto, it has worked pretty well for America, but that is looking increasingly unlikely for the future. But such a system applied to China? The country would break up. China would divide. It would be the end of China as we have known it for 2,000 years. In reality, of course, China has been transformed since 1949 and is now more united than at any time in the last 200 years. Indeed, probably ever. No Western-style governing system could possibly have achieved this. Such an achievement requires a different kind of governance, one that can think strategically, that is historically rooted, that is inclusive, that can mobilise the people, that can make things happen. There has been much debate about the relationship between party and state, which over time has gone through various phases. The Chinese Communist Party reinvented and reconstituted the state after the 1949 revolution. The party and the state are intimately entwined. There is a certain line of continuity we might observe in this context with the imperial state. Today, both the party and the state are rooted in the meritocratic principles which were so central to Chinese civilization. At the core of the state is the Communist Party, the brain and the leader of both the state and society. The success of the Chinese Communist Party has been its ability to express, reflect and articulate Chinese civilization. This was not achieved overnight. It has been the result of a long process that acquired a new maturity in the reform period, a moment of reconciliation and equilibrium between the present and the past. China is both a civilization state and a nation state. The two modes coexist, the balance between them always shifting in a dynamic and sometimes even conflictual relationship. But the primary reality is China's civilizational roots, and it is this which is the key to successful governance. It is difficult to think of any other political party in the world that expresses and embodies a civilization in this way. Vietnam might be the nearest example, perhaps. There are moments, even periods, when political parties come to represent and reflect the deeper roots of a country's long history. That is not unusual, but it's also different because these periods are, historically speaking, relatively short relatively short lived and don't reach nearly as far back in history what makes china so unusual is its extraordinary historical continuity which makes its civilizational roots a vibrant dynamic and continuing part of the present when the term civilization is used in western countries it generally refers to a distant and remote phase of their history that has very limited relevance to and purchase on their present. This is even true in Greece and Italy. China is entirely the opposite. Chinese civilization shapes the present. Nowhere is this more evident 
that in the nature and role of the Chinese Communist Party, the living embodiment of Chinese civilization. Thank you very much. <laughs>